Okay, so now we are going to look at the mass percentage of iron in iron three oxide. Okay, so the question is asking up to three significant figures. Write the answer, the final answer up to three sig figs. So we know the rules that the sig fig rules are that when you are adding or when you are subtracting, when you add or when you subtract, okay, when you're subtracting, we look at the decimal points. That's the decimal points for the final answer. So decimal, decimal places in the final answer. And when you are multiplying and dividing, multiplying and dividing, same story, you are going to be looking at the lowest significant figures in for the final answer. The lowest significant figures that were in the computation. So that number is going to be in the final answer. All right, so here we have a scenario where you are given Fe 2O3. And they're saying, fine, what is the percentage of iron? And since we are doing it, let's do the calculation, the fund percentage of oxygen also, okay? So for this, we are going to need, this is what we need to find, and we are going to need to find the molar mass of Fe2O3, okay? So here we are given two, sorry, two moles of iron, two moles of iron, each has a weight of, um, each has a weight of 55.85, okay? So let's keep it that way, 55.85 atomic mass units, okay? So two moles of iron and each is weighing 55.85, we can just put it grams also, that's fine. Okay, and, uh, and then oxygen is three. So there are three moles of oxygen and each is 15.99, uh, let's keep that also exact. So 15.99 grams. Okay, so, and when you add this up, what do you get? So let's do the math and I'll just pause. Okay, so we got this uh, molar mass when we calculated two moles of iron, each weighing 55.85 grams, um, comes out to be 11, uh, 111.70 grams and 47.97 grams is coming from three moles of oxygen in iron oxide. So when you add this whole thing together, it comes out to be 159.67. So you remember that we keep the lowest decimal place when we are adding. So in the, both the cases, it's just two. So that's why we are going to leave it two for whenever there's a question that relates to significant figures, specifically up to three significant figures. In this case, they want it up to three significant figures. Your answer should be up to three significant figures. Um, the final answer, they they've suggested. So therefore, do not round up or round down in the middle when you're doing the computations. Finish this whole thing then. Okay, so you have now the molar mass of molar mass of Fe2O3 and this comes out to be 159.67 grams per mole. Okay, now what you're doing is that you are going to take the um, uh, the percentage of iron is two moles of iron, each weighing 55.85 grams, divided by the molar mass, which is 159.67 grams of Fe2O3. Okay, so 55.85 grams is the 
molar mass that you get from the periodic table. Okay, next is the percentage of oxygen. So we have three moles of oxygen. <coughs> Excuse me. Each is weighing 15.99 grams of oxygen and that is present in 159.67 grams of Fe2O3. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, when you do the math, let's do the math and okay. So we see that the um, when we take the two moles of iron and we multiply each by uh, when we multiply by 55.85 grams of iron, which is the molar mass of iron from the periodic table, we get and divide that by 159.67 times 100, we get 69.95. And here, the three moles of oxygen times the molar mass of oxygen divided by the molar mass of Fe2O3 times 100, we get 30.4%. Now, the question very specifically stated that up to three significant figures. So one, two, and three. So you are just going to leave your answer as 69.9% because it's five and five is, you know, you not don't round up. So leave it at 60 because it's a question is specifically asking for three sig figs in the final answer. So you're going to keep it that way. Same as the story here, three sig figs in the final answer, three sig figs in the final answer, you get 30.0%. So this is for iron and this is for oxygen. All right, so with that said, you know, uh, we are going to now um, stop and we are going to be next looking at determining the empirical formulas, okay? So for now, we will stop this. Thank you for watching.